Can you hear me in Bahasa? Translation okay? It's, uh, okay? it's okay? Indonesia, it's okay? Indonesian friends. Testing. Okay, excellent. So without further ado, we are a bit behind of time. But we have three very exciting panel speakers here today uh, to really give, to really set the scene uh, of this meeting today. And um, I would like to invite the three speakers, one, one by one, <laughs> not at the same time, uh, to really talk about what really is UHC, why is it so important, and how do we actually, um, and also a current overview of what is really happening in the region in terms of policy and implementation. And uh, also uh, we have um, also talked about why it's important to integrate HIV services uh, into UHC. So this is left for debate. We will hopefully have 15 minutes for each presentation. Well, I'll be timekeeping. <laughs> but I, I think um, I will allow some time for, for, for uh, not, not too long. But I, I think what I would like to uh, really stress here is I, I want to allow opportunity for people to ask questions. Because I'm sure this is uh, not entirely um, uh, a, a very, uh, it's a very hot topic, but not everyone is familiar. So I do want to allow that time uh, for our respective uh, participants here to be more engaged. So with that, uh, without further ado, I would like to invite our first speaker. Uh, he was totally missed out earlier, but very, very important person for, I mean, at least in the region and in the community. I've known him for over a year. Um, so uh, Jonas Bragas is um, a Filipino uh, advocate. <laughs> Well, uh, and uh, but he's now based in Bangkok, and he's working as a program officer for Abkaso. And uh, previously, he was a senior political advisor for the Congress in the Philippines, um, and he knows a lot about UHC. So he's gonna give us a UHC 101, and also give us, and also really unpack why why is UHC important, especially for the community and key populations. With that, Jonas. So, I'm not going to do my presentation behind a podium because otherwise you just see my forehead. <laughs> and we're quite lucky this morning uh, to have excellent opening remarks that frame our conversation on universal health coverage. So my objective for this morning is to make sure that we all have common understanding of what UHC is, and at the same time, um, start thinking about why this issue is important for uh, our own communities. Okay, so why are we talking about universal health coverage right now? And I think it's important to identify what the buzz is all about. Um, one, uh, there's a clear global consensus on universal universal health coverage. Um, and I think that's partly, well, that's essentially because of uh, the inclusion uh, of uh, UHC as one of the sustainable development goals. Um, and the second part, I guess, is now we are in a new climate where uh, approaches to development is more integrated. So whereas in our previous development goals, you were able to develop We were approaching, um, you know, health issues like uh, HIV, TB, and malaria using uh, sp specialized uh, designs, I guess. Um, but now we we are looking at it in a more integrated uh, approach, and that I suppose is a, a diplomatic way of uh, putting out uh, what's happening. Uh, this. It's also causing some anxieties for certain people. Uh, does integration into UHC mean defunding our own programs or dissipating the kind of approaches, the tools that we, we've been working on that we know are quite effective in addressing, uh, you know, TB epidemic or uh, the HIV epidemic? So, and that's important. That's why it's important to unpack what UHC really means. 
Um, Dr. Pardede uh, provided the definition of UHC earlier. So um, essentially it means making sure that all individuals have access to health services that they need, sufficient quality that uh, these services are able to address their health conditions, uh, and at the same time prevent catastrophic uh, financial costs because of uh, accessing those services. And UHC is not exactly new. Uh, right from the very beginning, when the international community was talking about or prioritizing public health, UHC was already there, embedded, for example, in the constitution of uh, WHO. And later on, when we were saying that health is a human right, it's an entitlement for everyone. Um, what is relatively new and evolving is the idea of who should be shouldering the cost of universal health coverage. Because when, we were when global leaders were talking about UHC in the beginning, our leaders were debating about, uh, you know, this is something that's for rich countries. Poorer or developing countries cannot afford universal health coverage. But now we have, in a sense, an evolving model on how we can make sure that we're able to pay for universal health coverage. And I'll go into details about that later on. So if you look at the definition of universal health coverage, it also lays out um, what are uh, its objectives. One to make sure that everyone has universal access to uh, health care, uh, and uh, regardless of the, uh, a person's ability to pay. So it demonstrates the equity aspect of UHC. We provide health services to those who need those services. Uh, second, the quality of health services should be good enough to address the health conditions. Otherwise, what's the point? Third, uh, should offer protection from financial risks because of uh, because of our own health needs. And the definition also presents the features of universal health coverage. The first is that it's an aspirational vision. As uh, Dr. Pardede said, mentioned earlier, countries decide how they're going to achieve universal health coverage. That said, um, we know that um, we know that countries have their own specific context, their own limitations. It should be an expanding vision. So as we improve our systems, as we improve our resources for health, we should be expanding the coverage of uh, our own uh, universal health coverage schemes. Second, it's an imposed solidarity. For UHC to work, everyone should be contributing to UHC. It could be through uh, the premiums that we pay to JKN or to PhilHealth in the case of the Philippines. Uh, or because we're paying taxes, uh, we pay taxes through VAT, through excise, uh, through excise tax, through uh, taxes to tobacco and alcohol, or even our income taxes. So that's a compulsory uh, our contribution to universal health coverage. Um, the third is that it has regulatory role for standards of services and cost of services. So. Uh, it can determine what should be the basic package for HIV services or for TB uh, or for malaria. Uh, or, for example, it can also set the cost for medicines uh, by making sure that the system is able to procure uh, in bulk and therefore it lowers the cost. Or to say that, you know, we know that this should be the cost of, uh, this should be the reasonable markup for uh, the cost of uh, medicines. The last is risk pooling. And at this point, I must admit, I struggle a little bit, but I'll try to explain it uh, clearly for um, everyone. Um, but the idea uh, behind risk pooling is that we want to avoid direct payments. So instead of us, when we access uh, health services, paying a lot for uh, those health services, and uh, we have to develop a mechanism to lower the cost and it's shared by everyone. So how does risk pooling operate? Okay. Imagine, for example, um, in this room, we all have different health issues, health conditions, and therefore varying levels of risks in terms of the cost of the health services that we need. So it's expensive if uh, we pay directly for those health services uh, when we access them because we'd be shouldering the cost entirely, the cost of you know, the health fees for the doctors, the professional fees for the doctors, tests, uh, treatment, uh, cost of medicine, etc. But one mechanism or one approach that can be undertaken is that 
instead of paying directly for your services when we access them, um, we pull together a group of people that can or uh, create this pool or and, uh, pay uh, before we access those services and use the money that we collect so that everyone is able to access those services and pay for the services that they need. So everyone is contributing uh, for the cost of the services that each individual members of the pool um, uh, needs to pay. Um, was that a clear explanation of uh, this pool? Yeah? Yeah? So um, now the, that pool of money sometimes won't be able to pay you know, uh, fully for the health services uh, that we need. Sometimes they can cover the entire cost. But the idea is that since the, the risk is shared by everyone, it's distributed, then it becomes more predictable and then it becomes easier for the entire system to pay for the health services of everyone. So, um, I guess this uh, box or a cube uh, is, a, is, a, is a neat illustration of what UHC really represents. So, what do we mean by coverage uh, in universal health coverage? And there are three dimensions that uh, we're actually looking at. The first, the population uh, that's covered by the scheme. Um, so who, who's included within uh, your own universal health coverage scheme? Uh, the second uh, dimension would be the services that are included by your UHC scheme. And the third um, is the cost covered by your UHC scheme. Now by definition, the cost should actually be lower. The idea is for people to, left, to pay less uh, out-of-pocket expenses uh, to access health services. Um, Remember that uh, pool that we talked about earlier. So it's impossible for any country to achieve universal health coverage because there will always be new con health conditions, new diseases, or new technologies that are more expensive, or you know, uh, new uh, diseases that are more uh, co uh, costlier to uh, to cover. Uh, but the idea is uh, we continuously decide to expand what will be covered, either. Uh, the people who should be included in the scheme, the services that should be covered, uh, and the costs should be uh, included or paid for by uh, your pool. Um, if you look at this box, it also shows that this is a very political uh, space because who decides which population should be covered or what kind of services should be prioritized by the country or how much money should be paid for. Uh, these are the costs covered by uh, your pool. And I think this is where engagement uh, or active involvement should come in. Uh, because in that decision making processes, you should be more involved. You should say that uh, if you all come from the HIV um, uh, response, if we, uh, we're, all, we're all representing key populations, then we should be asserting that our own population should be included in this pool. Um, but this, you see, uh, this forum is also entitled uh, Are We In or Are We Out? Um, but if you look at this design, we are actually already in. Just a question of the extent, the depth of what should be covered. But if you're paying for taxes, then we have a say in our own UHC scheme to say that, uh, you know, our own health needs should also be uh, included or considered in our universal health policy. How am I doing? Okay, three minutes. Um, who funds uh, universal health coverage? Um, I think there are many schemes and approaches that can be uh, developed to make sure countries are able to achieve their UHC. And for each schemes, uh, their governments or uh, our countries can also de develop financing uh, mechanisms for these schemes. Uh, we all assume that UHC is just about insurance, when in fact it's not. You know, uh, universal health coverage can also be funded through direct subsidies from the government, and that's what's happening, for example, in Malaysia. They don't have a social health insurance, but the government is directly subsidizing. Uh, we can governments can uh, create a social health insurance schemes where uh, prepayment is compulsory for everyone, so for those who have income 
uh, that's taken out of their income or perhaps those who don't have income, they can be subsidized by the government or develop other schemes to pay for uh, social health insurance. It can be a combination of many schemes. Uh, smaller communities can create, create their own pools and create community-based insurance. Uh, but the point I think, and this is why I've changed this diagram, is that you, to uh, ensure we're, we're, to ensure we reach UHC, government subsidies or public investment for healthcare is very critical. We don't achieve UHC if we're saying that people should pay more and out-of-pocket uh, expenses should be higher, or uh, you know we rely on external donors. So it's very important, a critical point of advocacy for universal health coverage is to make sure that governments invest more for healthcare. Okay, I have, I think, Jocelyn, maybe three more slides, if that's fine. Um, so what is uh, UH, what is, uh, UHC is not, um, one, it's not free coverage for all health interventions. As I mentioned earlier, there would always be um, other costs, newer diseases, uh, new technologies that are quite expensive that cannot be covered by our own scheme. Uh, it's not just insurance, not a minimum of health services, so it should always expand. As risk pools become uh, more healthier, uh, then you lower the cost of your own health, uh, of your own um, health coverage, and it means efficiencies, and therefore you have money to expand either your services or to include more people covered uh, in your own uh, scheme. It's not just about treatment, it should include uh, palliative care, for example, preventive uh, services, and also it's not just about health, it's about social protection, it's about equity, it's about development, it's about making sure that when individuals are healthy, then they also have access to your uh, labor market. <coughs> Why is uh, UHC important for us? And I'm, uh, I guess, speaking to uh, those who come from community organizations or from, from civil society organizations. I think we need to approach U UHC, as mentioned by Dr. Pardelli earlier, from the lens of sustainability. It's an important tool to make sure, for example, our, that our own HIV response uh, is, is sustainable. Uh, and the whole uh, healthcare scheme as well is sustainable. Um, the second is that we have to, uh, I guess, recognize at this point that UHC is now seen by governments as a means to expand their healthcare. Um, it's not a, uh, it's not something that we should resist because in many conversations that uh, we've had with uh, health activists, with HIV activists, there seems to be resistance to UHC, a fear that UHC might uh, again cause. The dissipation of the kind of the model that we have uh, in our HIV response. So it's not to be resisted. Uh, in, in, instead, we should engage in, co in conversations about UH, UHC. Um, and the last is that we should also recognize that it presents opportunities uh, for us to, to expand our own HIV response, but at the same time be cognizant and be self aware that there are challenges that could lead to defunding some of the uh, services that we deliver in our own communities. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that um, because of these challenges we resist UHC, but rather find other ways uh, within the UHC framework of our country to make sure that our own programs, especially community-run services, are actually included. Um, I just want to say that uh, there was a huge uh, meeting about UHC last December in Japan. And prior to that meeting, there were civil society organizations uh, that convened in Asia Pacific uh, to develop a, a vision of what what should be what should UHC UHC should look like for uh, for civil society, um, and uh, to say that uh, universal health coverage should be people centered, uh, life affirming, participatory. And it's not just a question among those who are involved in biomedical services, but should include community and civil society as well. Uh, it should be effectively and sustainably financed. Uh, we can't uh, be investing into schemes that could be bankrupt because uh, the design is uh, uh, problematic. 
And last is that it should be accountable and accountable to the people, those who actually, those who need uh, those services. Um, and it's quite exciting that we have this forum today and we'd be learning more from uh, exciting developments from other countries about universal health coverage. One apprehension that we have about UHC is that it won't cover, uh, it won't pay for community health uh, and uh, community-based services. And uh, we're quite happy to point out in our program that, for example, in Thailand, they have uh, a universal health coverage scheme it's actually procuring services from community organizations. So there are spaces for us in this uh, uh, conversation. And I hope uh, we're able to develop a robust advocacy to make UHC better, improved, and more inclusive for communities.